actually uh, it was kind of uh, like I should thank myself as well because I missed my flight. I cancelled my hotel bookings, so it was a hectic journey to Dublin from India. Um, today we are going to talk about design, design principles, and what MVP is, and what are the design principles for MVP. So um, my name is Junad, Junad Masudi, and I'm a front-end developer at Acquia. And I have come from a beautiful place. Uh, yeah, it's called as Kashmir. It's in the South Asia. Uh, okay, so it's a short video of a place where I live. So what do you think when I say the word design? So uh, I guess probably you get an idea like when I talk of the design, uh, you might think that uh, I'm talking about something finely crafted objects like uh, logos or uh, posters or something like uh, which we can hold in our hand, but uh, which are actually you know classic icons of timeless design. But uh, today we are not going to talk about that kind of design but uh, a kind of design which we keep in our pocket and we may not have thought about it. That kind of design we are going to talk today. Uh, we are going to talk about the design of digital experiences today. So, uh, sorry. consider like, uh, if we talk about the Google, which processes about one billion queries every day, and uh, in a, about every one minute, hundred uh, minutes of footage has is being uploaded on YouTube, and if uh, we consider like, uh, if, if 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 we, uh, um, I'm sorry, <coughs> ah, that's in a, a single day, like. Uh, more than, uh, if we combine the three major networks of US, uh, what they broadcast in five years is what Google you know, broadcasts in a single day. And uh, if we talk about the Facebook, it processes images, photos, texts, and you know, to 1.23 billion people every day. And that's about one, uh, one by sixth of the humanity. And designing to this scale is uh, not like uh, very easy. It's very hard to design at this scale. So uh, to design at the scale, we have to keep two things in mind. One is audacity and another is humility. <laughs> audacity is something that you have to believe that uh, if I am designing something, that uh, it, is, uh, it should be something that the entire world will have to use it. And humility is something, uh, it's not about your portfolio or something. Uh, it's about the people you're designing for and uh, how you uh, how your design will you know help their lives to you know become easier now unfortunately there is no school for design for humanity 101 but you know while we go down the line as a uh, designer we have to you know uh, educate ourselves how to design in that way see <clears throat> the first principle is like we have to keep one thing in mind that uh, little things really matter. So there is nothing like a big or a small thing when you design for, on a page. Even a smaller and a minute detail that really matters for us, right? Uh, here is a good example of a like button on Facebook. So it's a very small object on a f like a block on Facebook, but you know, uh, designing that uh, it took about 280 hours. Uh, to a designer to design that you know small piece of button, but 
If it comes to me, I'll say like uh, it will take me just hard, hardly like uh, an, a 30 minute or 40 minute work. But uh, it's not like that only. What we have to keep in mind, the first thing is like the height and the way, uh, height and the width proportions. It has to render in a lot of languages. We have to, you know, degrade it gracefully on older browsers as well. So, yes, uh, that's why we have to, you know, keep uh, this thing in mind that, you know, everything on a web page matters. Another thing is design with the data. When you are working on a project which is on a very large scale and you have an incredible amount of information with you, and with that information, you can uh, influence your design decisions. But it's not simple as following the numbers while designing with the data. Uh, let me give an example of, uh, yeah. There is a tool on Facebook uh, uh, with which we can, you know, uh, report that uh, if something is in the violation of the community standards, Things like spam and abuse. Uh, there are tons and fo tons of photos that are being uh, sorry uh, that are being reported every day, but uh, there were actually a small percentage of photos that were you know violating the community standards. I, I mean, say that, that were being re reported uh, in in the violation of the community standards. Most of the photos were reported were party photos or bizarre, and uh, there was a you know an engineer at Facebook. He was like you know something is not you know going well, so he had a hunch and he was thinking that uh, something was going wrong. So he went back, you know, checked the data and came with a solution. Now the data he had in hand and you know uh, the patterns drawn, it was like a large amount of photos were reported by the people themselves who wanted that their photos shouldn't be on the Facebook. So uh, they added a new feature where you know. Uh, you can allow uh, that allows a you know person uh, that allows you to message to your friend to ask them like uh, uh, you don't want this photo to be on Facebook, but again only 20% of people did this and you know it was like only 20% people reported. They went back and you know worked on it. They talked to the you know people of uh, who are experts in uh, conflict resolution. And you know, talk to the people who are who have studied the universal uh, uh, universal uh, principles of polite design, polite language. I never knew that there is a language, uh, you know, called as polite language as well. So, <clears throat> and they found something interesting, like uh, they introduced a new concept uh, of telling your friend, you know, how you feel about this photo. So, uh, with the amount of data in hand and you know extensive research on data, this is you know how it looks today. And uh, research uh, research said like you know from 20% to 60%. Uh, I mean, say like this has increased to 60% uh, the uh, report abuses that you know are being done on the photos. And the, the same survey showed like you know uh, on the both sides of the conversation, people feel better and. Uh, uh, the same survey showed like uh, about the 90% of your friends wants to know if they have something really bad to you or you know by uploading your pic and i don't know about that 10% who they are and maybe yeah <clears throat> the word user experience is something uh, you know the definition of user experience changes from person to person from you know, a place to place. But uh, the broader definition of user experience is the common sense. It doesn't need, you know, development. It doesn't need any uh, knowledge of any, any technical knowledge, you know, when we talk of the user experience. User experience is common sense. How a person feels about what you are drawing or what you are creating, how a person feels about it, how, you know, how you are attaching their emotions uh, with the thing you are designing. That's what user experience means. So, uh, if uh, we talk of the principles of design, like there are uh, uh, four or five basic designs, uh, uh, sorry, uh, principles. One is the balance. 
uh, if we are creating something, we have to balance it all through the page or all through the app. Uh, it shouldn't be like overweight from the other side or something like that. Alignment is also important, and it's very important to align the uh, blocks or regions and uh, emphasis on a thing that's the most important part of the page it has worked with, you know finally even on the newspapers as well we see it every day proposition again we have taken it from the newspaper designs and we are using it uh, and uh, the moment the uh, flow of the content that's more important like uh, when we go from you know when we go down to the page it shouldn't be like from least to imp in important information to the most important information, it should be vice versa. And pattern, yes, if we are repeating objects and we should make sure, you know, how we are drawing the patterns and how we are, you know, showing it on the page. <coughs> so as I earlier said, uh, there are thousands of uh, design principles, but the most important design principle is a common sense. Uh, let's take an example uh, of uh, a cart. Like every designer is using this cart on an e-commerce site, but what they do is like, you know, they make some refinements and produce the same cart. But what if a designer comes and creates something else? I mean, say, uh, which is not even uh, like the cart or something, but uh, it replaces the cart on their side. How will you feel about that? I think this is where the basic principle of you know, user experience comes into play. Like if you have an object on page, you shouldn't be like you know, uh, thinking what is this going to do. It should be self-explanatory. That's how it should be. If a user you know, is stuck on your site thinking about the block or the content or a, a button, what it does, that means it's a bad user experience. Yeah, even if you can't make it, you know, uh, self-explanatory, at least make it self-evident. So, uh, one most important from the user side is how we are using the web. You know, one of the research showed that uh, if we are creating a page, uh, suppose, I don't have a good example right now. Mm. Yeah. If there is a page, it has a motive of uh, like ABC, but a user is using it for some other purposes. So it, it only happens uh, when we don't have a good user experience. So uh, for example, LinkedIn, yeah. Some of the people use it for uh, flirting with the girls, uh, but it, it has a some, a some other purpose. Uh, it's not like Facebook. So that's you know where it comes into play. Uh, we are uh, very much into like, you know, uh, from our childhood we have uh, read newspapers and we're very good at scanning the pages. We know, you know, what the, you know, hero title means, what this block means and that block means. That's, that's what, you know, really goes with the websites. When we scan a website, we don't go, you know, block to block. We don't go uh, from content to content. We just scan it, you know. It should be self-explanatory to tell us, you know, what the site is all about. And uh, there is one more thing called as billboard design. See, uh, we see billboard, and uh, the attractive thing is in like, you know, a very big font, and you know, uh, conditions apply is like a smaller. So that's how it goes. It should go on a, you know, uh, on a website as well. If we have something. Uh, to sell or if we have something to show cause it should be like a billboard design on a website and you know rest of the content should be uh, down the line and uh, <clears throat> when I was talking about this uh, the cart if we are going to change the design of the cart you know a designer has to keep in mind if he is like inventing a wheel or he is just creating a new rolling device so he should be sure of the thing uh, if he's replacing something with something else he should be sure that you know it's going to rock otherwise uh, it, it's not a fuse yeah so uh, if we talk of MVP uh, there is another term we call as MMP and you know uh, 
Eric Ries has written a great book on uh, difference between MVP and MMP, where you know uh, he has inspired millions of people. You know, from a, uh, while creating a product from MVP to MMP to a full product. So earlier it used to be MVP and then a product. Now it's you know MVP then MMP. MVP means minimum viable product. MMP means minimum marketable product. Then it should go. Why this uh, division? Because uh, many other uh, designs had uh, this notion, and uh, they used to say like uh, marketing team comes to them and says, "Hey, this is not working. This should be like this. This is not working. This should be like this." You know, when we are uh, doing a user experience on a thing, marketing team should be away from it in first place. So that's why it should be MVP only. It should be between developers and user experience guys, and then it should go to the marketing team as an MMP. Then you can sell it as a full product. Uh, we are now more conscious on you know uh, test before you invest principle. And with many projects starting, like we have hypothesis uh, which is answered via MVP, MVP release. Uh, if we think like you know if this thing is gonna work or something, so we have MVP for that. So what are the design principles for MVP? That's we're gonna that's we are going to see. And <clears throat> yeah. So MVP is like this. It's a small illustration how MVP should be. It's like, yeah, that's how it looks like. You know, uh, for some people, the first version of product doesn't mean it doesn't need to be nice or perfect. Uh, just go ugly, you know, early with one, you know, single color feature. So the concept, concept, you know, uh, you are trying. Uh, find out what market actually needs and what you are actually selling to the people. Technically, I agree with the MVP concept here. And uh, regarding the minimum effort and time to test this uh, product in a market rather than waiting for you know one or two you know years for you know full product to come in uh, with all the features, but this doesn't mean you know your product should literally go ugly and minimum. It means uh, you have to deliver qualities along with uh, along with one of the single you know uh, killer feature. Uh, if we you know talk of the uh, design principles for user experience here are some of them like it should be nice and simple visual design you don't have to go uh, with a lot of imagery things you don't have to go with a lot of uh, transitions and stuff it should be very nice and simple and if we uh, talk them about them one by one there should be unity and we already talked about it. There should be balance on the page. If like, if we are in a Drupal center project, we talk about blocks. Like, uh, if we place blocks, they should be symmetric, not asymmetric. If you know, uh, even if they are asymmetric, they they should be you know in a visual equilibrium. And the hierarchy is most important in any any project. Like, uh, elements should be arranged like from. Uh, it should be arranged like uh, if uh, there are four items and uh, they are part of something. So it, they, they should like uh, uh, aligned accordingly. You know, in trees or nests or you know weights uh, per the block should be given. And scale and proportion is uh, one of the most important aspects of any design. Uh, how we are relating this content, you know, uh, if we have a block on this page, how it's gonna, you know, relate it to the other block of the page, you know, uh, why the ratio of a block is, uh, there should, actually there should be a ratio uh, to differentiate which is the most important content and which is not the most important content on the page. And the dominance of something uh, we already talked about is like the contrast on the page, it should be like, visually uh, differentiated from the other things. And uh, if we talk of similarity and contrast, uh, there should be actually uh, a contrast on a page. It shouldn't be uh, like, uh, I mean, say the f uh, colors should be differentiated in a way if, 
uh, there should be a clear separation between the elements, like for, for, you know, from the black and from the gray and whatever we have. Uh, second is the uh, giving a user an onboarding screen to show that the unique value of the product that you are selling. Onboarding screen is a sequential screen of two, three, or maybe four, uh, four slides that comes for the first time when an application is open. The screen uh, uh, actually consists of three or four uh, screens and talks about the product, what your product offers and how it's gonna solve their problem. Uh, but as the most of the user quickly skip the screens, um, yeah, uh, when the user skip the screens, he, he, uh, screen, he should have you know, uh, that wrap in mind, you know, what actually this product is offering me. So there should be a nice visual intuitive design you know, for the onboarding as well. This is the onboarding screen for Airbnb uh, before we log in or sign up. Uh, it's very, uh, they have used nice and appropriate pictures to convey the home-like pleasant feeling. Again, it's about creating the first impression. And yeah, the other thing is the welcome your users and walk them. When we log in and there, uh, when we log into an application or something, there is, uh, there should be another screen called as a welcome screen, where a user, <coughs> where uh, an application should give a short tour about the app, you know, about the offerings of the application itself. If a product is new and unique concept, make sure you walk uh, users through the process. And the goal is to give them a feeling that they have succeeded to manage and you know understanding the concept. Uh, this is a user. Uh, <coughs> this is a welcome screen, uh, an example from you know three applications. Even you know uh, we can put some coach markers or the welcome screen as well to tell the user what this you know menu or this specific item does. And if we have uh, some empty screen, we should also utilize that in educating the user what this empty, empty screen means or you know how to fill this empty screen. And the most important thing is like you know preparing the FEQ that accommodates the question that may arise from the user's side because it's the only MVP where we can grab most of the users uh, things so that we can accommodate in the full product. Yeah, and uh, this is most important thing, uh, managing a micro feedback on a site. Uh, here is a great example uh, by Uber, uh, how they manage this. Uh, for example, Uber asks uh, you to rate and comment a driver that you drove or rode a car with. By collecting the bits of information from user, uh, who actually uh, uh, engage with your product. I think, uh, yeah, uh, you, you can use the data to improve uh, your services as well, you know, if uh, you have some queries to the driver or something. So uh, that will help the Uber also to get, you know, better next time. Um, now, uh, there is one more thing, like, uh, it's like, uh, changing in the already existing design. If you if we have a design and we are going to change it, uh, make clear that uh, if it is you know helping you out. I mean, say I'll give you an example. You'll understand. Uh, these stars were something uh, we used in YouTube as a rating from one to five, but it didn't work because a user was giving a one star or a five star, two, three, four, never worked for YouTube. Then they came with, uh, with a like and a dislike thing. But uh, it is said that uh, billions of people were not liking it because they were already used to the stars. Uh, what the, what the uh, YouTube did is uh, they ran a poll for two, three months, you know, they came with a lot of uh, news bites about changing it so that you know they make an impression in a user's mind that they are going to change it to something else. So it shouldn't be like that. Uh, it was YouTube, but you know, in many of the products, it, it won't be like that. You know, we can't you know, uh, spend uh, such amount of money. And for Drupal, uh, UX has been a big deal always. 
because uh, what kills a product is the number of clicks. That's the most important. Uh, there are talks like it should be most of clicks or most of pages, but Drupal is something like, you know, where we have to go page by page and we have to educate ourselves about Drupal. If we talk about uh, WordPress and Drupal, you know, I talk to a lot of people, uh, what do you like most? Uh, they said WordPress, because it's easy. Uh, <clears throat> to me, it's more, you know, uh, easier to create a blog site in Drupal rather than WordPress. But why people like WordPress is because they have a good user experience uh, rather than Drupal. But uh, I think Drupal, you know, guys, they are moving towards the usability and uh, even the in the keynote by Dries, he showed the blocks and menus. So it's like uh, decreasing the amount of clicks. And that's, you know, the most important thing. And the uh, conclusion is like uh, we shouldn't take a lot of time in crafting the MVP, but, you know, we don't have to go ugly as well, you know, while creating an MVP. And there's a conference, uh, Front End United, that's happening in May 2017. If you want to join it, you can. And there's a contribution sprint that's happening uh, on these dates and time. And any questions? Okay. So you can evaluate this session. Thank you.